I'm born and raised in San Francisco, actually not too far from here. 120 years of Filipino history. I walked over here to come speak. And I'm very fortunate and I'm blessed that I'm in a position where I could share this information with you. Um, I come from a big family, right? There's nine of us, I'm the baby of the family. Uh, born and raised in San Francisco in a part where a lot of people probably have seen but don't understand because it's like night and day, right? The South of Market, Tenderloin area. Y'all heard of the TL, ain't nothing tender about the loin, you know? But I'm here standing to you. I could look out this window on the 19th floor and look down and see my actual house where we used to put the smash down. And I'm talking about the 3M, straight money, Mac, and murder. That's for the dudes. And for the women, it was the movies, McDonald's, and a motel. And that's how I came up in a household learning how to survive from a neighborhood where my people and my community was tight. But growing up in my neighborhood during a certain period of time, in any ghetto, crack cocaine hit. And I didn't choose it, it chose me. So when I got involved in that lifestyle, right, I thought I'd find a pot of gold on the other side of the rainbow, because we was making money. I went on the other side of the rainbow, but I didn't find a pot of gold. I found a pot of police. And trust me, you know what I mean? That didn't stop me, because not only I became one of the guys that was out there hustling and making money, right, I touched money. I ended up becoming my own best customer. So I went from selling dope right, to getting busted, to using dope, and started robbing people for it. And so I know what it feels like to have money to be at the top and then to drop to the bottom. But God has been good to me. And so no matter how many times I was in and out of jail, I was always looked after. Because it wasn't always about that. It was about me getting to my purpose in life and destiny. And that's why when you see Kaepernick, that's why when you see Stephen Curry, and they, you didn't even get to part Jalen Brown. He added money on to that. But it opened the door for a lot of other people who wanted to invest in something that was positive and productive, right, for the people in the hood, started giving money too. So you imagine somebody who's born in, I'm a downtown boy for real. I'm a Frisco cat for real. For me to be in a neighborhood where I used to destroy, and the worst crime I ever committed, I feel like, is I sold dope to my people. Because I knew I, I neutralized a whole part of my community. And now not only being somebody who destroyed my neighborhood, but now I'm back as a stakeholder. Owning land and property where I'm taking care of the people. But the journey didn't start right there. Right? It always started, though, with the people. And so I'm very blessed and I'm honored because there was times that I had people and my own family, my loved ones did not believe in me. I didn't believe in myself. But it took people like Mauricio Vela, Joy Ferguson, Lauren Bell, to believe in somebody, one man, to start believing myself. Through the strength of God, I was able to snap back and come back. And there was an opportunity for me, right, where it said, gang prevention counselor, Filipino, so I'm reading that sign going, shit, I'm Filipino and I gang bang. I got to qualify for that job. <laughs> Facts. I went there, right? Well, I called it 415-206-2140, extension 139. Facts. He asked me to come in and he said, Mauricio Bella. He said, you uh, ever been locked up? I said, ah, here goes that question again. So I told him the truth. I said, yeah, I've been incarcerated. He said, okay. You know how to speak Filipino? I lied. I said, yup. <laughs> they hired me. And during that time, in 1993 and 94, there was a lot of violence going on, right, in the high schools. So he asked me to go find the Filipino gang members so you can, you know, help them out. And so, you know, I'm born and raised in Frisco. I knew where they was all at. Balboa High School, one of the most notorious schools back then in 1994. Big fight ensued between blacks and Filipinos. I was very fortunate enough, right, to come into the school. They had a Filipino principal, right, Ms. Mona Burgeon. They said, we need your help. I don't care where you've been, but we just need your help because nobody's learning. So I said, cool. I get with the Filipinos, right? 
I got with the blacks. I had a brother who I knew named Andre Alexander, and I got Leite, one of the biggest Samoans you ever see for muscle. Put all the youngsters in the room, because they was willing to go ahead and sit down. We all sitting down. The police wasn't in the room. The administration wasn't in the room. It was just us, the people. And we figured out why the fight originally started. And most wars start over what? Women. And I hate to say it, she wasn't even that good looking. <laughs> I was like, damn, y'all willing to die by her? Y'all finna go to prison for her? They was like, hell nah. All right, we can make sense out of this now. And so we sat there and it started evolving. Well, we ain't got nothing to do. They said, let's have football tournaments. Let's have hoop tournaments. Let's have talent shows. The people had all the power. They started just saying what they wanted, the kids. So I said, okay, we can make it happen, but we gotta mix the teams because it can't just be us against you guys. Then the Latinos and the Samoans got involved. So now we have black, Latino, Filipino, and Samoan all at the table. And it started working. The power was always in the people. So I would ask them, okay, what y'all want to do? They said, we want to name this club a name. I said, okay, what y'all want to name it? In 1994, back then, you had Fortain the Players Club. You had Get Low Players, P-L-A-Y-A-Z. Anybody from Frisco, you know that. Put it on the board, United Players, October 8, 1994. Fast forward 27 years, we are worldwide. I got a chapter not only in New York, I got a chapter in the Philippines. We working on one in Hawaii. So you want to go on vacation with me, let me know. Uh, Let's go. Shit. Yeah. Fucking with a real player here. You understand me? And so, I was able, through Mauricio Bella, to start the club and bring what we had to understand how to turn it into a nonprofit. So I brought it back to the community. I got other folks who I know who done walked the hot rocks and bagged that barefooted, who been through the grid iron. Got them on my team, because if you gonna deal with violence, you have to pe have people who been violent before. You got a toothache, you gonna go see a dentist. You gonna get a mechanic, get your car fixed, a mechanic. So when it comes to violence, I got with folks who I knew, guys and girls who used to be violent, but they changed their life, right? They changed their life behind the walls before they came out. So they got on a team. So fast forward a little now, we own land, we got property, I got 20 staff, all full time. Benefits, healthcare, we all living and we giving back. Instead of taking life, we giving life. And we got an organization now, right, that serves over 150 kids a day. We got a program that we have right now that has brothers and sisters that's coming home from behind the walls a reentry program ran by a lifer, my homeboy, every butler, 10 toes to the floor, boots to the ground, where we providing all the resources that you need that's essential for you to survive, whether it's housing, whether it's clothing, whether it's food. That's what everybody wanted in the first place, is to have some equity so we could survive. So when it said it takes the hood to say the hood, that's what it is. All it takes is the people, the spirit of love, that has been there, done that, to come back to want to get back. So we didn't choose it, it chose us. So lastly, I just want to say, you know, there are so many that were, people that was instrumental in the evolution of our organization, United Players, right? It wasn't me, it was always the people. And so there's been a lot of brothers who I know who still stuck behind their walls, who we need to come home, who can make so much of an impact and what's happening on these streets. And so up in San Quentin, whether you up in the main line, whether you up in West Block, Yardside, Seaside, Alpine, Badger, Carson, right, Donner, or you up in, on a shelf up in there, you got action. Come see me, because what we do is God's work, and that shit work. Come see me, come to the Players Club, 1038 Howard Street. because all hands is on deck when it comes to this work, because it does take the hood to say the hood. I'm done.
Okay. Huh? Oh, that's so good. Oh, I'm so happy. You really brought that. Thank, Thank you. you. You're welcome.